April 26, 2023 is Yom HaShoah. This is the national uh, Jewish day of remembrance for the events that took place during the Holocaust, which is what the Jews call the Shoah. And for this reason, several different entities across the globe remember the Holocaust and promote Holocaust education in the month of April. We do this right here in Hayes on FHSU's campus and in the Hayes community, as well as in our much larger virtual community here at Fort Hayes State University. And we wanna take a moment today to tell you a little bit about these events, a little bit about the committee that's planning these events and invite you all to join us. My name's Amber Nickel and I'm currently the chair of the committee. However, this really is, I think, a multi-person effort that requires members from the student body, from faculty, and I think most importantly, from the community here in Hayes. For the rest of you, for the rest of our amazing committee members, why don't you take a minute to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about why you decided to join the Hayes Holocaust Remembrance and Education Planning Committee. Hi, I'm Holly Marquis. I'm a lecturer in the history department. This committee really got its start with a conversation that Dr. Nichol and I were having together. She had asked what the university did for Holocaust remembrance, and I was telling her about some sort of disparate efforts we had done over the last several years, but there wasn't a standing committee, so we decided to make one. Hi, my name is Chelsea Kiefer and I'm an undergrad student here at Fort Hayes. I decided to join the committee because I am an online student out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And I really am committed to finding ways that the online students can get involved with the campus. So this was a great way to make sure that the online voice was heard and give feedback on making sure all the events were available to virtual students. Hi, I'm Samantha Gill, and I'm the public services coordinator at the, or the manager at the Hayes Public Library. Um, I thought it was important to join this committee because we already have programming um, that we talk about historical events and current events, and we've had discussions on this topic before, um, but I thought that it would be great to have it in a format like the committee. Hi, my name is Perry Harrison. I am an assistant professor in the English department here at Fort Hayes. And um, I joined this committee to kind of broaden the presence of the committee across the campus to um, help get the English department involved and um, to bring in a um, written literature perspective on the um, events of the Holocaust. Hello, my name is Brian Gribben. I'm the coordinator for special collections and government documents at Forsyth Library at FHSU. Uh, my academic background is actually in transitional justice and the international politics of denazification, which of course really involves a, a, a knowledge of, of, of the Shoah and, and the crimes of the Hitlerite regime. Um, in the scope of my duties here at the university, I seldom get to actually use that knowledge. Um, other than just chatting with Holly and Amber. Um, so I was just excited to, to join this committee as well as kind of bring the library into, into its kind of sphere and, and, and really help promote these events because. Uh, so as you can tell, we have an amazing and very talented committee put together. Um, and as a result, we really have a very eventful month coming up with a series of talks, roundtables, film showings, and book discussions uh, on campus in virtual space and at the Hayes Public Library. So I'm going to kind of talk to you now a little bit about some of these events and uh, have committee members share about the time, the location, and what folks can anticipate hearing or seeing when they are there. So we're really kicking off the month with our keynote uh, talk, which has been sp sponsored for, by the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. And we are having Dr. Jake Newsom come speak on campus. Holly, can you tell us a little bit more about what to expect during this talk? 
Yeah, so we're very excited to start off with Jake Newsom's Pink Triangle Legacies. It'll be backwards, but this is the book. So he writes about the persecution under the Nazi regime of LGBTQ folks in the first part of the book, and then um, goes beyond the Holocaust to after. Um, lack of memorials, lack of payments, and also how does the Pink Triangle change from a badge of persecution to something that has been reclaimed for queer rights? So 6 p.m. Forsyth Library 217. There will be pizza. There's also a hybrid format. So um, please join us online if you're not on campus. And Jake would be happy to answer questions after his presentation. That is really exciting. I know him from Twitter and he is amazing, right? And so I'm so stoked that you were able to organize such an amazing speaker on campus. Uh, speaking of free pizza, right? Um, and you could eat for free almost all week. We are also having a Times Talk on campus at noon the following day on Wednesday. Can you tell us a little bit more about what to expect with that Times Talk? Yeah, so in March and spring break, Dr. Nicole and I went to Poland with 13 of our amazing students. And so several of the students will be talking about their experiences of encountering Jewish life in these spaces and really connecting what they were learning in the classroom to physically being in these spaces and, and visiting. So I'm very excited to hear about their experiences and again, free pizza. Beautiful, thank you for that, Professor Marquis. And then that evening, our some of our favorite partners are going to be hosting a film showing. Uh, Chelsea, can you tell us a little bit more about who's sponsoring that and what film we're watching? So this is going to be between the Forsyth Library and also the History Club on campus. So this will be one of the April History Club meetings. So in Forsyth 217 at 4 p.m. on April 12th, we will be showing Jojo Rabbit. And then Brian will be helping with the discussion afterwards. If you are an online student, you can join the Zoom at 6 p.m. Central, which will start the discussion time after the meeting. So we just ask that you watch the film whenever you have time and then hop on that Zoom and talk about it afterwards. Beautiful. And that's just the first week of events. We actually have two more weeks of events after that. So the following week, uh, we're really uh, kicking things off again on Tuesday. This will be on Tuesday, April 18th at 11 a.m. And we are working directly with the Greater Lafayette Holocaust Remembrance Conference out of Indiana uh, to host a survivor talk virtually uh, for the community. Uh, Perry, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the survivor and how it might be maybe a little different than other survivor stories folks have heard? Absolutely. I would be delighted to talk to you about that. So on Tuesday, April 18th, we will have Dr. Alana Bloom, who is a um, survivor of the Romanian um, persecution. Um, Dr. Bloom is um, comes from a unique perspective. She is the child of someone who perished in the um, Struma disaster, which is a ship that sank carrying nearly 800 refugees from fascist countries. Um, and this sank while she was, um, before she was born. And she was actually raised um, believing she was Catholic as a um, kind of an assumed identity and did not find out until much later in her life that she was not. So she comes in with such a unique story. She later in life moved to Tel Aviv. She's currently a doctor in Tel Aviv. And um, the presentation will be a recorded presentation from her, followed by a live virtual Q&A with her. Um, this is such an amazing opportunity to have a interaction with somebody who, from a branch of survivors who you honestly don't usually think about. And, a um, branch of survivors with unique stories. So I encourage anyone who can to come in for this to um, have a chance to ask Dr. Blum questions themselves. And then the, uh, the next two days, we actually have a series of book clubs. Uh, the first book club will be hosted at the Hayes Public Library, and then there will be a virtual book club the following day. Uh, so, Samantha, why don't you tell us a little bit about the book club at the public library, and then Chelsea, you can follow up with a little bit of a discussion about the virtual book club. Sure. So, we will be discussing the book Salt to the Sea, and uh, this is actually um, 
I would consider it like a new adult um, kind of level why some libraries have it in. So it's very easy um, reading for really those teenagers, but also adults. Um, and it talks about, um, you know, it follows the story of, I believe it's four different children and their survival stories and everything that they encounter. So we will actually be meeting in the conference room, which is on our main floor um, in the library at 6 p.m. on April 19th, I believe. And then the very next day, April 20th, we will have a Zoom meeting at 5 p.m. Central. Once you sign up and register online, that Zoom link will go out to you the day before. And like Sam said, this book is young adult. It's very approachable for everyone. So don't feel like if you don't have a history background that you can't pick it up and enjoy it. It's very beautifully written. It follows four young adults. Um, and like Sam was saying, their survival story throughout trying to evacuate. So it's a, a very touching story. It's a very emotional story, but it should really blow up some, some good discussion. I feel like I should ask you to introduce our unofficial committee member at this point. That's just kind of hanging out. This is Connor. And I thought he would be less intrusive on my lap than whining next to me, but he also is very excited to represent the Holocaust Remembrance Month. We're excited to have him. Yes, he's cute. Um, and we can all use a little bit of something cute during a topic like this, right? Um, but that's not it. We actually have two other events that will occur in the final week of, our, of, of the month. And these include two talks on campus and in the community at the Hayes Public Library. The first event is on April 25th. This was organized and put together by the Hayes Public Library, and we are really excited about this. So Sam, will you tell us a little bit about the talk and what we can expect there? Sure. So we have had Jessica Rockhold, and she's actually the executive director of the Midwest Center for Holocaust Education. Um, we've had her present virtually before, and she is such a wonderful speaker, so impactful. So we're actually bringing her back in person this time um, for her talk about the Holocaust denial and distortion. That will be on April 25th at 6 p.m. in the Schmidt Gallery. And that presentation explores the history and the evolution of denial and ident identities um, for the distortion and misuses of the Holocaust. So I think it'll be a really wonderful discussion and we're really looking forward to having her back. And this is such an important topic, uh, given the, the fact that we're seeing less and less denial and more distortion, that is distortion of the facts or the events, um, which is extremely dangerous the further that we get away from these events. So we're so excited that you put this together, and I know I certainly will be there in the audience. And then last but certainly not least, uh, Forsyth Libraries is going to be hosting Dr. Stephen Naran of the Yale Fortinoff Archives, and they have a really big announcement to make, right, Brian? We do, Amber, and you had a big, big hand in making that possible. In December, Forsyth Library approached uh, Stephen and Yale to become an access site for the Fortinoff Archives, meaning that um, community members can come in and access this video archive of Holocaust testimonies, um, as well as students, faculty, staff at the university can use their FHSU credentials to access this archive, both on campus, of course, as well as remotely. Um, this archive actually began in the late 70s as kind of a grassroots project in, a, in New Haven, Connecticut. And um, so when groups tried to you know, go ahead and, and preserve the memories of these, of these survivors through video testimony, contributed, contributed it to, to Yale. Um, it was kind of like the founding of this video archive. And since then, they've collected testimonies from a variety of groups in the Americas, Europe, Israel, um, there's like over 12,000 hours of testimony and, and about 4,400 individual um, individual testimonies captured. And so on Wednesday, April 26th at 4 p.m., Stephen Ron's going to actually be visiting us on campus to present on a project he and some of the other staff at the at the archive had created. Um, they took songs and, and, and poems from these testimonies that 
were you know preserved and 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 performed by by the survivors during you know what would be the worst period of their lives um to kind of sustain themselves they researched these songs they provided some historical context to their origins this was done largely by an ethnic music uh, musicographer and then they went ahead and arranged them and set them to music and Stephen's going to be sharing a lot of those with us on the 26th um, there will be a present a reception at 3 30 before the presentation which is going to be a hybrid event and live streamed um, and he'll of course be taking questions afterwards um, we also do have a display in the forsyth library um, it's front lobby that actually allows users to come and view some of the testimonies outright and of course provides access points there as well beautiful and i know that there's a public display set up at the hayes public library as well right sam Yes, we do have a Holocaust Remembrance display. Um, it's full of books um, on the topic. It includes the book club book that we read um, last week. Um, it has flyers and information about um, this month as well. So yeah, definitely check it out. And there's lots of copies available of the text at the Hayes Public Library as well for folks to come check out. And students can always get the text from Forsyth, uh, from Forsyth Library as well, either at the library or via ILL. So definitely get a hold of that text and read before you come to the event. Um, so I want to kind of close out our very informal discussion uh, with a little bit of, uh, with a question that everyone always asks me, right? Why do you do this? So why do you each think that Holocaust education and remembrance is so important? So the further we get out from this event, the less people seem to know about it. Students can usually give you the statistic of 6 million Jews died, but that is about it for some, unfortunately. So it's really important that we bring these kind of events to the campus community and the larger community to um, educate the public. My answer is going to be pretty similar. Um, when I was going through high school, I didn't learn a lot of the facts about the Holocaust besides statistics but one thing i didn't hear is the voices of those who went through it so those are very important to have those um, unheard voices have a place that they can share their stories and what actually happened to those and those testimonies are the best way to keep that history alive yeah kind of playing off of what chelsea just said um i think it's so important uh getting those testimonies reading the stories because i think that is what has the most impact on people is reading stories, these real life events, um, because like anything in history, the farther away we get from it, um, the more people stop to think of it as like a real event. And this did actually happen and occur. So it's very, very important for us to continue to uh, remind people of things like this so history doesn't repeat itself. I'm going to echo um, Chelsea, Holly, and Sam, and say that um, that for me, it really is the the maintaining the voices of the survivors. That um, these are people who had their voice silenced in such a um, a, a powerful way in the past, and um, we owe it to the generations who were silenced to give the voices to these people, and um, also to make sure that. Um, we draw the eye uh, tooth that things like this can happen when we aren't vigilant to make sure that we're prepared in case things like this begin to happen again and when things like this happen. Well, again, I'm going to really echo what's already been said. Um, Sam and, and Amber have alluded to the really disturbing phenomenon of the trivialization of, of the Shoah. And, you know, whether it's driving personal agendas, these inapt comparisons, um, soft denialism um, really is a dangerous, dangerous thing. And education kind of offers that bulwark against that. Um, more And more so, uh, some of the work that, that Phil Zambardo, who's kind of associated kind of with the infamous Stanford prison experiment and Ollie Cohen talk about how Holocaust education really helps cultivate what's called the heroic imagination. Um, the idea to kind of gird yourself and prepare yourself for, for situations, periods like, like that, 
And it really helps kind of allow ourselves not to be a bystander. I don't think I could have said it better myself. Um, all of you alluded to something uh, that is really important, especially to Jewish communities. They have a word for this, Sakor, to remember, right? We must remember, um, but also in order to prevent something similar, but not the same from happening, we must remain educated on these topics. Uh, this is why I love working with you all so much, right? Because it's a great team. With that, I do want to kind of take a moment to thank our sponsors, because we do have quite a few sponsors in this endeavor. Uh, specifically, the Departments of History and English have spent a lot of time committed to this. Uh, Forsyth Library has spent a lot of time and money. And then the Lafayette Holocaust Remembrance Conference, uh, which has had kind of co-sponsored the speaker event with us. The American Democracy Project, which is helping with the Times Talk. History Club, which is hosting the film, and uh, the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. And last, but certainly not least, Hayes Public Library, which has been uh, a strong and equal partner in this since the beginning of its conception. Uh, so do, if you can, come to one or all of the events. They are free and open to the public. And then keep your eyes peeled because on April 26th on Yom HaShoah, Tiger Media will be releasing a uh, interview with four students who spent time in Poland as part of that trip that Professor Marquis mentioned. <laughs>